sticks as you Hi guys, welcome to another P Carry 12 production. So we're going to review Iron Man VR. So I've actually finished this and I've got a couple of streams online on Twitch that I've actually done and I will eventually put it on the YouTube channel but I'm going to be going through the, how good this game is. Now, out of all the PlayStation VR games I've played so far, I do recommend Iron Man VR. Now, I'm going to go through the gameplay, I'm going to go through if it's worth buying, and I'm also going to show you exactly how to play this sort of the game. So, without further ado, let's unbox this, and I will then get straight into the review. So, let's get into it. Right, let's take a look in the box of the Iron Man disc. As you can see right here, suits up with Iron Man. So there's Iron Man VR. So let's see what's in the case itself. So we're just opening this up one hand, total freestyle. And as you can see, we've just got the disc. So there's nothing additional. And that's pretty much what we get in the pack. Could be Pepper calling. Tony? Pepper, how are you feeling? Like I fell out of an airplane. You sound pretty spry for that. Well, someone broke my fall. You get a name? No, but he was quite dashing. Sharp suit, strong jaw. Hey, boss. He's on the Right, so this is Iron Man VR, so that's a little bit of a clip of me streaming it on Twitch, as you can see right here. So there's many parts to this particular game in, in itself, and I highly advise to actually go through the actual training missions first before you even engage into actually playing this game. So it is a bit difficult at first doing the actual controls, but the storyline is pretty concise. It happens between Iron Man 1 and Iron Man 2 before the Avengers even happened and that's effectively how this starts. So you pay as Tony Stark obviously and you have a whole bunch of AR, uh, AI and that type of thing. You don't have Jarvis or anything like this but you have other AIs coming around as your main one will be Gunsmith as well as Friday. And this is pretty much how you sort of play within the aspect of things. So you basically have your two move, move controllers and you just point to the area that you want to do. And then there's also the rocket capabilities and that sort of thing. So this is in the main zone between missions, as you can see right here. So you're talking to Gunsmith here and you're also looking at different things that you can do. What's your point? She's not like us, boss. Let's face it, she can't build big guns. If she could, you wouldn't have called me out of retirement. I should be your onboard AI. Well, Friday is excellent in the field. <laughs> well, obviously, obviously. I mean, totally. I'm just saying, you know, think about it, boss. Just show me what you made. Sure. Step right up. What's all this? Know your enemy. Right, the storyline starts you off basically where you're in a plane, something goes wrong, drones attack you, and effectively you save the day, and Pipe, uh, Pepper's in hospital and you find out who is responsible. Effectively, it's like a mystery as well as being a hero at the same time. So it does draw you back to some of the uh, events that occurred in Iron Man 1. So it will do that in some parts of the game. let's talk about the positives of this game um so basically this is one of the awesome things about the suit itself you can actually upgrade the suit so you can upgrade the weapons you can upgrade the thrusters you can do anything that you unlock eventually 
you can actually go into this section that you have in Tony's home and you basically go and upgrade it, which I think is a very good feature that allows you to then go back into the game, get more points so you can unlock more of the systems and be able to replay the game over and over again. Having that replayability is definitely a motivation to pick up this game again and start doing more missions and practice sessions to get more points and to also do a lot of the side missions. Now the world map is definitely a good feature as well. It allows you to then, like XCOM style, look around the globe and pick the missions that you want to go into. You don't have to do them in order necessarily. You can actually do all the side missions first and then the main story and all that sort of stuff. I particularly did a lot of the main story and I wish I did actually a lot of the side missions because I could have actually got more points and unlocked a lot of the other additional weapons that I didn't unlock. But you can go back and you can do that type of thing over and over again. Those missions will still be there. You can still go back even after finishing the game and actually look at that. So I'm going to show you a little bit of the gameplay to see what you can see in one of the training missions uh, that you have in Iron Man VR. So it gives you a rough idea exactly how this game actually functions. All right, let's address the elephant in the room. So I don't usually uh, dedicate a section in my review to just the negatives of uh, some sort of product or game in this particular thing, but I'm actually looking at the biggest thing that plagues this game is loading screens. The loading screens take an unbelievable amount of time and it's in between every single section of the game. Once you get in the game, it's okay, but for every little section, no matter how small, big, or medium size the level is, the loading screens will take you between 5 to 10 minutes to load, depending on the actual mission. Well, once you get in, it's fine. It's just a matter of every time you go from one section to the other, whether it's even loading up to the main screen, it's always going to give you this loading screen, which just takes forever. Now, yes, there's some certain things you can do within the loading screen. You can actually swipe between, you can play with the water, you can do certain things like that um, to read up on the mission and that type of stuff. But you're still plagued with this constant loading screen that lasts so long. Uh, I do think Marvel should, or whoever created the game, should actually address that because there is no need for loading screens to take this long. Uh, it's loading completely off the hard drive, it's not loading off a disc, so it shouldn't take this long technically. But this is pretty much the main issue with the game that I have. In But everything else in terms of gameplay we're going to get to next is definitely spot on but definitely keep this in mind the loading screens are very 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 long so that is a normal aspect of this game just to let you know all right let's move on to gameplay 
but uh... What's on the menu today, sir? Gunsmith suggested I brush up on the fundamentals. Oh, did he? That's a surprise coming from him. Right, let's talk gameplay. So one of the most difficult things to get over in this particular game is the gameplay. So you literally need to get over that learning curve to really enjoy this game. I do advise redoing the training missions over and over again till you get used to the actual controls. Now this game would be perfect on a 360 degree type VR headset. So this would be perfect on PC, but in this case you got to do with what you got. Now the PSVR is not a 360 degree gameplay sort of thing because you have to be within view of the camera. That controls both your motion control and also your headset traction. So you really do need to actually look at that. And you'll see it, the controls right here will show you a little demonstration. And bam! A little off the mark there. Gonna try that again. Let's talk storylines. So this happens between Iron Man 1 and 2. So this is basically its own take based upon more of the comics. And when I say Iron Man 1 or 2, I mean the actual movie monologue where he comes out at the end of Iron Man 1 and tells you that he is Iron Man. And effectively, this is the aftermath of it, uh, leading you through the story of it. Obviously, S.H.I.E.L.D. hasn't gone bad yet. Director Fury is still part of S.H.I.E.L.D. and the director of S.H.I.E.L.D. And you will see a lot of elements of S.H.I.E.L.D. in this specific game, especially the carrier ship that occurs before the Avengers and all that sort of stuff. So you get to see a lot of that stuff, but you don't see anyone else but you. So it's basically focused on Iron Man in general. So, but the battles are pretty epic when it comes to playing this game. You also do battle enemies that you would never have seen in the movies and also backstories to specific sections in Iron Man 1 of the movie. So here you'll see a ba classic battle scene uh, from one of the chapters, I'm not going to tell you which one, but this is basically on one of the carriers which is pretty iconic and I do think it's a pretty good example of the mechanics of this specific game. So I definitely think um, once you've mastered this type of thing, this is a real challenge to get around, especially once you realize how you should fly in general. So you're basically trying to fly and you're trying to shoot at the same time with move controllers. And it can be incredibly difficult at the start, but you will get used to it. As you can see here, here. it's New intel incoming. Got it. So this is why you asked me here, Nick? Shields hard up for hardware? Other contractors stepped up. We're doing just fine. That flip phone says otherwise. This isn't our smartass. Right, so you'll see the very regular characters here. So you'll see Director Fury and you'll see him as a different actor because Samuel L. Jackson is not actually playing it. But it's a similar sort of monologue to how, how he played in the actual movies in general. So I do believe that the actual storyline is really good in this one, not just the gameplay. So we'll just take a look at more of that very shortly. All right, there's a little bit of a spoiler here for the storyline, but it's a very small part. But I do think it's important because it differs from the movies. The mask. Toss it. Ghost. We got her dead to rights, boss. 
She's surrendering. Then she's a fool. Hey, hey! We are not killing her. You don't have to do anything. Hey! Pal! Still doing this for Pepper? Stop! Pal! Stop! You let her escape! I gave you an order! She deserves to die! Where's your hollow projector? Right, so it gives you a bit of a taste of the drama that occurs between the AIs and a lot of the characters within Iron Man. And this is definitely something that doesn't occur in any of the movies. So I want to show you some of the last parts of it. And one of my favorite scenes is basically the very end, which is effectively this huge monster that you basically have to take on, which is basically Gunsmith. And it is a bit of a spoiler, so if you don't want to see this section, I highly advise skipping through it. But here it is, as you can see in its entirety, when you battle that very last uh, epic battle with Gunsmith, it is really, really cool. Because I'm so big! Okay, I'm in the mansion. I'll try to bring down this dome. Get the dome. Help me bring down this giant idiot. Don't push me, Stark. Sir, your weapons are insufficient against his shield. His code is beyond next level. But I am seeing some innate vulnerabilities in his armor. Defects. Def okay, so this concludes really a lot of the gameplay elements of this particular game. Now, it's definitely a very, very intuitive and hands-on game once you actually get used to the controls. So this is obviously the final battle and um, yeah, I'm not going to give too much away, but um, you definitely need to go and play the game to really experience what Iron Man VR is capable of doing. And it is the best PSVR game you can probably get on the PlayStation at the moment. All right, let's talk price per dollar here. So the value basically here, if you can get these, the actual game itself uh, for 48 Australian dollars. So this, obviously you need a PSVR and two motion move controllers in order to play this game, as well as the PlayStation camera. So you can see it's on special for about 48 Australian dollars. I will put it also, what well, the US amount is also for our US viewers. And also, you can also get a full pack. So if you don't have a PlayStation VR, or you don't have the Move controllers, you can pay about $542 Australian and you'll get the game, as well as the PlayStation Move controllers and the PSVR controller. So that's a pretty good deal. And you get that also from Amazon US. So price per value, is it worth paying the price tag for PSVR? and also getting the Iron Man VR game itself? Well, the answer is yes. I've pretty much enjoyed every minute of every hour playing this game, and it took me about 12 hours to complete. And out of all the PSVR games, I'd have to say this is the most I've played out of any PSVR game. And it's the most I've probably played since Beat Saber <laughs> on the PSVR. So there is definitely a lot of worth in paying for this particular game. I definitely highly recommend it. There's also playability to it. So even if you're not a Marvel fan and that you are an avid collector that needs to have this game, it's still for the people that also want to have fun. And experiencing what Iron Man has to offer in VR is definitely something you should consider. So this is Iron Man VR, so I hope you guys enjoyed the review. And I actually will give this about a four out of five stars review right there because I have a very big issue with the loading screens on there. It's a brilliant game. If you're a Marvel fan or not a Marvel fan, it's the most funnest PSVR game you could ever play. So definitely buy this game for the price definitely worth it if you find it any cheaper obviously in the year definitely worth it again it's definitely something you should keep in your collection if you want to do anything psvr wise 
Don't forget to like and subscribe this video if you like this review and if for any future reviews make sure you hit the bell icon. Now drop a comment down below if you want to interact with the community on PKTV. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.